Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, cheaters, parents, what do you do? What are you supposed to do? Stay tuned. It's a wonderful day on the tennis court. A wonderful day on the tennis court. A gorgeous day on the tennis court. Won't you be my? Can you be my? Won't you be my partner? Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Mr. Tennis Spins Etiquette. All right, so coffee sponsor of today is another someone. So someone writes, two for Rob, two for Harry, one for the other dude. So he got me five coffees, two for Rob, two for me, and two for maybe Coach Chris, I guess. Yeah, he don't deserve it. Anyways, um, please have an episode on junior tennis etiquette. My child made a bad call. The ball clearly nicked his frame on a descending, oh, on a deciding point and said it did not. Can a parent rule against their child from the stands like a coach might play his own child less since there is a credibility there certainly no nepotism all right so let me clarify this question a little bit we're going to actually do the episode on this question and maybe elaborate a little bit more okay but yeah Okay, I'm going to absorb this a little bit like I'm absorbing my coffee. And wake up a bit so that I can tackle this question. All right, so if you want to keep me going and keep my Java habit rolling, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. If you want to hook us up, hook the channel up and support the channel, super thanks is the way. You can support us as much or as little as you like. Link is below. All right. Cheers to you and thank you so much. All right. So this question is going to take more than just me. Okay. I called in Mr. Etiquette here, Coach Rob, and uh, he doesn't drink coffee. So he's drinking his uh, sparkling ice today with me. Uh, <laughs> so the thank you to the someone who hooked us up today. Yes, thank you. Okay, so Coach Rob, did you hear the question or should I re... Uh, yeah, I got you. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so apparently, kid made a bad call. The ball clearly nicked his frame on a deciding point and he said it didn't. So I'm just trying to speak out loud and absorb right. it myself. Trying to picture yeah. how it went down. Yeah. Can a parent rule against their child from the stands like a coach might play his own child less. Hmm, interesting. So he's, is he asking, since he made a bad call, that he should take him out of the next tournament? I, well, I think if we back it up a little bit, I would first go, does the junior actually know that if he touches the ball, he loses the point? Like, if he swings and misses and it nicks his racket, does he know the rule? Because mm. a lot of those rules, you, you mm. kind of have to play through to learn them. Like, no one's really sitting there that I know of, sitting there reading the actual rule book, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you, most of the rules you sort of learn as you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if he didn't know the rule, okay, then definitely educate him after the match and say, hey, do you know the rule? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he... Um, you know, knows the rule and he knows it, then, okay, now you've got a different question. You got to handle, you know, hey, you've got to be a little more honest here on, in, your, in your play. I wouldn't, from the sidelines, as a parent, I would just let it go. Like, I don't want 
parents interacting with the players, especially in a tournament, they need to be left alone and just, you know, go support your player, get him there, get him early, get him what he needs, you know, but once it, once they're playing, let them go. Okay, um, so this, this is a little different than what we're normally tackling because usually we're essentially yelling at the other kid and supporting our own kid and saying, you're a cheater, you know? Right. So this is like we're we're yelling at our own kid for not doing it the right way. Right. And so hopefully there's no yelling going on, but <laughs> um, you would rather have it be, you know, something where after the match it's, it's you know, you have that conversation. Well, I think that's what he's saying is that um, do we play him less, meaning do we suspend him from the next tournament? If he's intentionally knows the rule and he is absolutely cheating, I would have a you know heart to heart and go, hey, look, what are we doing here? This is not, you know, mm -hmm. this isn't who you want to be about. This isn't who our family wants to be about. You know, we need to carry ourselves at a you know higher standard. Okay. Um, so granted, granted, let let's give, um, let's put you in that spot. You're the father, right? And then your son was the one that did it, um, knowing that you are a coach and he knows the rule right what would you do there then so at that point you know if it's still a tournament i i'm more of just a parent i'm not a coach in that situation i'm not you know allowed to talk to the kids while they're playing you know i'm just there as a parent mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i would definitely have the conversation afterwards and go look this you know did you not know you felt the ball hit the racket? Did you, were you intentionally trying to, um, you know, what was the intent there? Uh, right. Were you so worried about winning that you felt like you had to, to, you know, cheat the rule to, to win the point? It, and it may not be a conversation you have on the car ride home. Wait till the next day, you know, let, let the match, let that one settle. Mm. And, and then talk about it the next day or the next time you go out and practice or you're hitting together, go, hey, let's talk about that rule. What do you, you know, because a lot of times if the kid's intentionally cheating, probably knows he's doing it wrong. Right. So, you know, every family dynamic and every co player coach dynamic is a little different. So this brings up actually a, a bigger issue here. Uh, I'm smiling because I was there um, as the younger we are, the more the more we try to skirt the rules, I guess is what we uh, is is what um, I'm trying to say here. And like if if I were that kid, if I were that kid, I would probably it would take a lot. It would take a lot for me to say, yeah, I screwed up. Right. right. I, no. I, and sometimes it, that's why you always go, hey, are you sure? Because at some time, you know, online calls, you say that because give them a moment to think about it. Like, hey, did you want it? To, did you want it to be out and you mm -hmm. called it out or did you actually see it out? Right. Right. right you know, right. Um, I had a, a, an interesting one. The other day we had a junior match, um, a little friendly club match. And the one my one player called it out. And then the other guy said, hey, are you sure? And. He was like, you know, should we take it over? And my player stopped and thought, but he goes, you know, I wasn't really 100% sure it was out. I'm giving you the point, your point, let's move on. Mm -hmm. And no hard feelings, everybody got along with it and he kind of knew, you know, like, hey, I, I probably wanted it to be out. I kind of, it was probably really close, but probably hit the line. You and I know that, you know, 99% out, it's 100% in. And the ball's traveling fast and the game's quick and, yeah. you know, it's calling the lines is tough. Right. You so know? let's let's talk about discretion then. Um, you mentioned a great point again in that if it's 99, if you think it's 99% what? Out. Then it's 100% what? In. <laughs> so we're talking like 1% or less. If you're not sure, then you have to give your opponent the benefit of the doubt, not yourself. Okay, so I don't know how far this particular situation got on the court, and if you know the other person, um, 
you know, the opponent actually made a big deal out of it. It didn't go that far. Right. So and I'm, maybe the opponent didn't know the rule or right. he didn't hear it or he didn't see it. Right. You know, um, it's a good question for sure. Right. But it's, you know, from, from where we are here in the shop, it's kind of, we're trying to picture how would this go down? Totally. You know. So I, I feel like if everybody just gave the benefit of the doubt to the opponent, then the game would be a much better place. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And a lot of it is, do you want to be, do you want that person to have the reputation of somebody who doesn't play uh, fairly? Right. And, and you, hopefully you don't want to be that person because people are eventually not going to want to play with you. Correct. Because they're just like, I, I don't need to have the aggravation. Um, of disputing line calls, arguing the score. It's not fun. Right. You know, and we're talking more in a social side versus a competitive tournament side, but as a social side, you don't want that reputation. Definitely. All right. So try to play as fairly as you can, okay, or as it can be played, okay? I would probably air towards your opponent versus yourself. I know as young people out there, it's a difficult task because, you know, winning is everything, especially when you're young. It's kind of ingrained in you. Uh, I was there, Coach Rob was there, and I'm sure you guys were there too. But let's try to do it the right way and set a good example, okay? Absolutely. Winning isn't everything all right so i want to thank my man coach rob for you know showing us the way in uh, this particular situation and on the etiquette realm guys thank you for watching tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis Guys, are you tired of playing against the ball machine? The ball machine always wins. And you're not really getting any interaction with people. How about playing with somebody at your level or maybe a little bit better than you that can improve your game? There's 27,000 people nationwide waiting for you to play with. It's all at playyourcourt.com. You can find your new tennis friend, join local leagues, all for less than $5 a month. You'll have access to players at your level, your speed, and make some new tennis friends. Check it out at playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin. Link is below.